Welcome to Speaking of Chambre. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, I'll talk with some of the organizers of the 25th Annual Prairie Arts Festival. Then we'll hear from Schomburg's Memorial Observance Committee about their plans for the upcoming event. And we'll close out the program by speaking with representatives from the Village and Park District about the annual Farad Tour von Schomburg. All of this and more today on Speaking of Schomburg. This month, the Municipal Center Grounds will host Chambers' annual celebration of fine art. With us today, tell us what's in store for this year's Prairie Arts Festival. Our Chairman, John Latko, and artist, Irene Peterson. Well, welcome to Speaking of Chambers. Thank you, Mayor Larson. John, how long have you been involved with uh, this, this event? This will be my 25th year also. Oh, so you, you've kind of, kind of aged along with the festival. <laughs> <laughs> the festival's aged much better than I have. <laughs> Well, tell us, how, how did you get involved? You, you were on, on a, uh, some kind of committee or commission? or? Yeah, we, I was um, a recent uh, um, addition to the Cultural Commission in Schaumburg. And that, in the very first year, before the year before the uh, arts festival was started, um, the Cultural Commission wanted to have a fine art uh, group of artists in the September Fest uh, Arts and Crafts Fair. So we organized that with a small number, maybe about 50 artists uh, were in that. The following year, it was decided that we would have a branch off and have our own uh, separate fine arts festival, which we started 25 years ago on Memorial Day weekend. Do we have any more, how many artists do you typically um, attract to this? this we, we'll this have event? about 140 artists. And we have one right here. And we do. <laughs> For the first year. <laughs> Irene Peterson, yes. Tell us, how did you get involved, Irene? Uh, also with the Cultural Commission. Okay. Uh, I went really was interested in plein air painting and um, it's a, uh, Plein air, really? plein air. Is plein that, air, you know, I should explain is that. Is that, that a shouldn't French I? phrase? <laughs> it is. It's, it's called for uh, in open air. Okay. It's when artists take their easels and paints and canvases outside to paint to enjoy the natural light. It's uh, a lot different than painting in the studio. A lot of us take uh, our cameras out and take pictures and then go back to the studio and paint, but you, you lose a lot of the natural light and the you have a lot of, especially with the digital cameras now, you have really sharp focus, okay. and it's really not like that in nature. So it's, it's more fun. It's more like Monet, you're saying, or, or Matisse, or? More impressionistic, yeah, because okay. they tried to capture light. Oh, sure. How many ent entrants did you have last year? You know, we have exactly the same number we had last year, 28. Okay. Uh, we have some very well-known artists this year. It's going to be an excellent show. Now, what are some of the ground rules for this? For plant, well, you plant have art? to paint in, in Schaumburg, within the boundaries of Schaumburg. You have to paint uh, plein air. You actually have to be outside, no taking a picture and then going back to your studio to, to uh, finish it up because it's a lot more exciting to do it in open air. You go out with all your supplies and bug spray and sunscreen and umbrellas and boots and whatever it takes to paint uh, outside that day. Well, what, what kind of entrance have we had in the past? Uh, well, this is our second year, and unlike the 25th year, maybe we'll get 25 years too. Uh, this is the second year, and um, we enjoyed uh, a lot of camaraderie last year among the artists going out and painting together. And some of the sites, though, what, what are some of the sites? You know, everyone picked something different. It was just amazing. I don't oh, think okay. there was more than one. One of the winning um, entries was actually a puddle at the farm. So, you know, it was interesting. You see a lot of the, the light coming down into the reflection of the puddle in one of the ruts at the farm. It was very interesting. That's a, that's a park district reenactment over here, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. It is. I can imagine that there are enough sites here with the, the lovely grounds we have here. And oh, it's just gorgeous. Everyone likes to paint at the cabin and the ponds over there, the municipal swans. It's just gorgeous. It's a wonderful place to paint. Schoenberg well, we has we, so many things. We didn't have swans here the first few years, did we? No, we didn't. A lot more geese the first few years. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's, true. Sure everywhere. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Now, how many, typically, how many artists uh, come out for the Prairie Arts Festival? We'll have about 140. 140. And uh, is, that our, a, is that kind of a peak number? It is our peak number. We uh, pretty much maxed out the number of spaces. The artists all have, um, they all bring tents. They all have uh, about a 10 by 15 foot space. So it is spread out throughout the park. Um, and um, that's the 
the maximum number that we can really fit. At this you have point. oils and watercolors, but you also have crafts to we some, have, to some yeah, extent. Yeah, it's a fine arts juried show. So we do have uh, what we do have painters, we have drawers, we have printmakers, we have sculptors, but we also have fine arts crafts, which would be uh, really nice pottery. We have glassware, we have woodworkers, we have jewelry, and uh, probably some other things that I'm forgetting. <laughs> now, now, what are they competing for? I mean, I know, they, I know there's also, they're, they're selling their, their product to the, to the public, it, it comes out, but they're also there's some competition for best to show. Absolutely, we have judges who come in and will evaluate, judge all of the artwork that's there. And uh, artists are given awards, and those are cash prize awards. We have a, uh, a first place, a second place, a third place, and we have another, uh, 11 uh, merit award winners and so uh, they you know they all they all getting some cash back um, but they also uh, get the bragging rights of saying they were best in show and they're, they're from all over too aren't they they're from all over the country okay. we do have artists from all over the country who will come and they do the show regularly or some, we have new artists who come from other states but it's mostly Midwest artists. Well, we had California. We've had. I'm sure we had Florida. We've had Florida. We have California. We have people from New England. We have people from uh, the western states. Uh, yeah, you have veter veteran artists that come out. I mean, uh, we do. We have some artists who this is their this is their stop in May on Memorial Day weekend, and they've been coming for over 20 years. I'm sure they like the grounds. I, I mean, I, uh, it is I, beautiful. I, 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 yeah. yeah, I mean, there are some art fairs set up you know, in, on city streets, but this is set up in a beautiful park around a pond with the swans. We have three entertainment uh, stages going all during the weekend uh, simultaneously. Uh, and we have great, uh, great uh, fair food uh, vendors who are here. Uh, it's really a lovely weekend. It's a great opportunity. And a fine art fair like this is a great opportunity where not only do you see the art, but you also get to meet the artists. They will all be in their booths. They will all be here with their art, and they'll be able to answer questions, get to know them. And some of the artists even do commission work. If you have something in particular you want done, they're willing to do it for you. And that's Memorial Day weekend, isn't it? It's always been Memorial Day weekend. It's Saturday and Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And now, you're an artist, Irene. Yeah. I am. Are you going to have show some of your, uh, some of your, your artistic... Uh, I am for the very first time. I'm going to pitch a tent and, and see how it goes. It's, I've always been wanting to do it. I went to the arts festival last year. It was just gorgeous. The, the grounds are lovely. It was just so nice to walk through, and I thought this is the perfect place to start. So I'm, I'm going to try. Now, how did you time this with the swans that have, have their signets <laughs> right around you? How did you, how did you work that out, Jan? Um, what I work, uh, yeah. How did I work that one out? Well, it took 25 years oh, of uh, planning, but uh, no, I. It's, it is kind of amazing that it does, it does work. It does keep the geese away. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. the, and the artists and the, and the people here love to see the little, little signet swimming around. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah me too. Me yeah, too. It's me fun. Too. Now, uh, you, you do other things besides uh, the Prairie Arts Festival as far as the village is concerned. What's well, something about the Schweiker House? Uh, well, yes. Um, I'm on the Cultural Commission and a 1% for Art Committee, but through that, I'm now president of the board of directors of the Schweiker House Preservation Trust, which is an historic home, an iconic modernist house that is in Schaumburg, and uh, which um, the trust has been formed to be sure that the building is preserved and that it will be used by the community in a variety of ways. So we're working hard on that, and that, that trust just uh, started fairly recently. And it was just, there was a pretty good write-up in some kind of in a planning magazine of some sort? Or? It's been in several magazines, okay. yes. And uh, there's a nice interview in the American Institute of Art magazine that is out right now with uh, Todd Wenger from the, the Village Hall, who is... Uh, now, your involvement in the art, though, goes beyond just the Prairie Arts Festival or and, and uh, Schwecker House. Didn't, didn't you teach art? At the I did teach art for 35 years. And oh, wow. uh, retired, although it seems right now that I'm more busy than when I was working at the school. So uh, I don't, um, I've managed to stay, uh, stay active in the arts through all of that, yeah. And that was, that's, where, was that at Frost? Uh, that was at Frost in Schaumburg. I taught here for, yeah, for 35 years. 35 years. Mm -hmm. and, and any of your students ever come back to you and say, you know, uh, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm selling my work, I'm, I have a studio? Uh, I, I'm amazed. It's, uh, I've had parents and kids come back who have graduated, gone to college and do have an art career now. And uh, yeah, oh, it's, it's great be, to see. It's, it's going to be very gratifying. It is, it is, it really is. How did you get involved as an artist, uh, Irene? Oh, that was a long road. Um, okay. Took a trip through business and corporate training and then started up with art again um, just maybe 15 years ago okay. uh, with another Schomburg artist, Diane Johnson. Uh, she's uh, you know, a watercolor artist and uh, I worked with her for uh, quite a few years. 
So we'll, we'll be seeing both of you then at Memorial Day weekend, right? You'll be there. We'll be there as yeah. artists, and you'll be there <laughs> kind of herding or shepherding some of these artists along and making certain the judges uh, do what they're supposed to do. That's right. And saying hi to anyone who wants to say hi. Okay. <laughs> you know, I did want to mention, too, that the uh, plein air competition um, is being exhibited inside the Prairie Center for the Arts, inside the building during the festival. Oh. Well, so we'll, we'll be able to see everyone's art as well as their awards. I look forward to seeing that. Great. Th Thank thanks, you. Irene. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. As Memorial Day approaches, local organizations once again work together to pay respects to those who have served our country. Find out next what we can expect this year on Speaking of Schomburg. Every year, the Village of Schomburg co-sponsors a Memorial Day ob observation ceremony. With us today is to talk about this year's event are Chuck Lincoln held of the American Legion, Sam Singh of the American Sikh community, and Gordon Stanley of the VFW. Welcome to the program, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank, Thank you, Mayor. You. Glad to be here. Yeah, now, t tell us a little bit about the, 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 the ceremony here. I mean, uh, you've got all kinds of folks involved in this, and, and uh, it's Memorial Day. When did it start? Oh, this started many years ago uh, with uh, Reverend Sternberg. Uh, he came over to, uh, uh, he was also a Rotarian. He came to the Rotary Club, and with the Rotary Club and him, we started the Memorial Day many years ago. I mean, that could have been 25 years ago, maybe. And it was been running over there ever since. It's right there on St. Peter, right? Yeah, right, Peter. right, exactly. Schomburg Road. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, People loved it. They look for every year. I look forward to come out there because they just loved uh, the group and, and, and the program that we put on. And it was, uh, you know, all volunteers come out, set this all up. Uh, it was one way too that we would recognize our veterans, and people loved it. So we just continued it on. And uh, this, uh, I think, uh, the Reverend Hudak now has took over. And I think we missed one year uh, because we. Uh, went over and hit the wall. If you remember, we put the wall up at, at, uh, at the Flyers Field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then sure. we held it over there one year. So, and then the following year, we didn't have anything. And then I think you, yourself and Reverend Hudak got us all in touch again. We got us right back on, on, yeah, yeah. on, on the road again. Pastor wanted at St. Peter. Now, now uh, some recent addition to, to the uh, ceremony has been the, the Sikh community. Is that correct? Yes, the Sikh community did participate uh, last year. The first time was for the Sikh community. They're growing in Schomburg. I am personally living in Schomburg since 1988. Then the American Sikh community felt that we're living in the country, we have to be part of this country and grow with our neighbors and let them know who are the Sikhs and what they have done in world wars. And people in the American history don't know about, much about the, our ancestors, how they fought side by side with the British Army to have this freedom we have. And we appreciate that freedom we're enjoying today and we want to part of this uh, American society to feel that we are part of them, we are part of with them all the time. Tell us about your involvement. Well, we, uh, we supply the firing detail. Uh, American Legion supplies them all the flags from all of the different services. And uh, we shoot a 21 gun salute. Uh, we march onto the, by the, the gravesides there. And uh, we also present three wreaths too for uh, some of the fallen comrades. And there's a, there's a number of them in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. That's the whole, you know, the nice thing about it is that we, uh, the, the, the American Legion and the VFW have sort of merged together and we're running programs together uh, as a team. And not only that, all the different community organizations from the village here that are involved with us. Uh, it's unbelievable that we all work together as a group and making this happen. It's just not us. It's uh, it's the Rotary Club. It's the the Lions Club. It's the, it's the JCs. JCs. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we're all involved. And everybody every year, more people are coming up and want to be part of it uh, to work with us because they see what great things we do. And that's great. We're community based, and we want to do things within our community. And it's all our community organizations working together as a team to make things happen. Now that starts at, at the Hoffman Estates. Uh, yeah, at Hoffman Estates, it starts at 10 o'clock over there when we, at Hoffman Estates Memorial, what happens, they'll bring, they'll bring down the flag over there and they'll uh, hand it and fold it and they're gonna have it to a, a Schomburg officer, will take that flag and then he will, he will escort that flag back to St. Peter's and then when we get to St. Peter's, we'll have our group will pick up the flag from him and we'll present it to the, to the 
two guys that are going to be hauling the flag. We'll raise the flag there and bring it down to half mast, and then we'll start our procedures with taps and and, and, uh, and our, to our war memorial. So it's all going to happen right there. So what time does it start? That, 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 you know, I know you start well, the 1045 10 over there. Mm -hmm. And then at 1045, our ceremony starts over at St. Peter's. And then at 1115, uh, in the church. Yeah. Okay. And we've got different groups, you know, the same groups uh, we had last year. Uh, we got, uh, let me see, we got here. We got the Spring Valley concert that's going to be over there, music okay. over there. And they played last year, too, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did. They did a wonderful uh, job last year. The Just Legends will be there doing the singing for us. Oh, that's over there. good, too. Sure. And then uh, our special, uh, our, 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 give our special, our, our memorial is going to be Colonel Jack Bishop, a retired U.S. Army. He'll be our, uh, uh, giving our uh, special uh, address. And you know, the Master Sonys this year will be Julie Clark for okay. the Rotary. Well, we've done every other year. We took uh, the AM uh, Rotary one year and the PM Rotary next year to be okay. uh, our Master okay. of Ceremonies. Okay. And you're involved in the Rotary too, aren't you? Oh, yes, I am. 20, 25 years in the Rotary. I see. 20, 25 years in the Rotary, and now you're, you know, you're, you know, you're with the. Uh, American Legion. And He's in the VFW. VFW. <laughs> American Legion. Yeah, nice, nice, yeah nice, we're nice, both, in, we both in the same organization. You're both in the same organization. Right? Yeah. I love our community. Yeah. I love my kids who all grew up in this community. I love what this community does, what it did for my children. And I want to pass it on to do with other people's children in this community. It's a great community. That's great. That's great. Now, your, your, your military involvement was what, Chuck? I was in the U.S. Navy, uh, Vietnam uh, era, and uh, served aboard the USS Forrestal. And then uh, after I got out, I stayed in the rest of the war. I stayed in with a, uh, a reserve group, I, and I flew out, and I was an air crew out of P2Vs, uh, planes flying out of Glenview, and uh, we were taken flying up and down the coast. And uh, the Sikh community has been involved. You, know, you were starting to get involved, too, because you, you had an active role in... in yes, in, in, we, in, we are trying to let the American communities know that Sikhs are part of this community, and the Sikhs are going in the U.S. Army now. We have a Sikh serving in the army in the last, uh, uh, in this country, there was a Sikh who fought in World War War, World War II. His name was uh, Tind, uh, Pagat Singh Tind. He has the pictures, he's on the web page. You can see a Sikh fought for the Americans in World War II with his turban, with his beard. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to bring out the history to show the people that Sikhs have been living here so long and they were part of the American society mm -hmm. since then. And now the Sikhs are serving in the army with their turban, with their beard. So they are growing into that field too that they want to be feel to serve their country. I too. can imagine initially probably was a little bit of a conflict there in terms of, of dress code and-, and, and Yes. Uh, there but is now, a, now it's okay. Now it's okay. That's not, it, it was hard to educate the people once you show the people what our parents and grandparents fighting in world wars, how they fought. Helmet was given to them. They denied the wearing the helmet. They fought with the turban. So the turban was so dear to them, they were willing to die with that. In the last two world wars, 83,005 turban wearing six soldiers died. 109,045 wounded for the freedom of Britain and the world. But nobody knows yet. Yeah, no. Nobody knows that. Yet. <laughs> I didn't. So we're trying to oh, bring I... out the history, bring out the people, yeah. tell them, show so there's them. There's a story there that, 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 that it's got to get out. <coughs> get out there. Story yes, to be told. <laughs> yes uh, we are glad that Village has taken initiation in that. We appreciate you guys as your team that are giving us the opportunity to go and let the people know who we are. What about your military involvement? Oh, I was uh, a long time ago. I was in I was in the Korean War. I was on a uh, in the Navy on a destroyer tender. We used to bring all of the United Nations destroyers aboard, and we would arm them and we would provision them and give them fuel and everything. And uh, for that, I was in the reserve for three years. But uh, then they called me up when the when the Korean War started. Since then, I've just been involved in the American Legion and the VFW. I was senior vice commander in the VFW and. Uh, I, I, I just enjoy being with veterans, and I enjoy trying to help veterans. Now, if somebody wanted to get involved and, 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 and help, um, let's say, as a volunteer for the, the Memorial Day observation, is, is that a possibility? What do they do? Oh, they I just have to either contact the American Legion or, or, or uh, the VFW or uh, Kathleen over at the Village Hall. She'll, she'll direct them to uh, us, or uh, people from St. Peter's uh, will direct them to us. Uh, uh, there really isn't just, too much volunteers that you can do other than just participating in the, the yeah, pageantry yeah, itself. Sure. Uh, I mean, we, we try to keep it military as... But, as, but certainly somebody who's, involved, who, who's a military veteran who can involve themselves in the American Legion and also the VFW. Oh, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, 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 of course, then, of course, 
to take take somewhat of a role as far as Memorial Day is concerned. And then we expose them all the other people that are there beside. You know, there's other groups over the Lions and are they, you know, they're it's all exposed to all these groups. Big community. It's a big community. There's so much to do in our community. Chuck, good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, sorry. Thank you, nice friend. I think pleasure. there's a more uh, volunteers needed for the picnic as well too. Uh, you yes. didn't mention that yet. That's right. There is a picnic. Mayor, yeah. very good to meet you. That's, that's, that's after the event itself? Yeah, after the, after the event, there's going to be a picnic in, 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 out in the back of the barn. And this year, we have a new added, be, stepped up to the plate, is Culver's ice cream is coming oh. over with their little ice cream cart. <laughs> now, what's a picnic without ice cream? <laughs> so I went over and knocked on his door, and he said, you know, we'd like to have your ice cream. He said, I'll be there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Very good. good. So Thanks, glad, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Sure. Spring is in the air. What better time to dust off the old bicycle and, and tour the town? Find out more next on Speaking of Chamber. In the spirit of the village's German heritage, residents are invited to hop on their bicycles on May 20th for a scenic hour-long ride through our town. Here to tell us of what's in store for this year's fraud tour on Schomburg, are the events coordinators, Village of Schaumburg traffic analyst Bill Blanchard and Park District Special Events Supervisor George Gray. Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. T t tell me a little bit about this fraud tour of on Schaumburg. Where does it start? How did it start? And, and uh, where does it go to? Where does it come from? The uh, fraud tour of on Schaumburg starts at uh, Blackwell School on Walnut and ends here at, uh, at the Village Hall um, at the... Uh, between the, on the plaza out here, between the, the Purse Yeah, ends at the Center. plaza, that's what I was looking for. The plaza uh, for a, uh, a family picnic afterwards with some music. Uh, the the uh, Fraud Tour started about 22 years ago um, in order to uh, help uh, make uh, aware of all the Schomburg's bike paths and bike lanes. Yeah, yeah, I think the idea was to, to, to get families involved and, and get them out there and riding on, on, on these paths and they can see what, what, what lovely grounds we have with, with the park district and with the village. and. George, what, what, what's your involvement as far as the fraud tour is concerned? Well, I'm, uh, I'm working on the park district side, coordinating the, uh, the volunteers, the entertainment, um, as well as uh, with Bill working to just uh, make sure it's a smooth running event uh, from start to finish. How long a ride is it? Wow, it's, it's a kind of a trek, uh, you know, from Blackwell to, uh, from Blackwell School to uh, the Town Plaza. I think we have a track down of what, 2.2? Time 2.2 times 3 equals 7 miles, Okay, give or take. It's a real family event, too, isn't it? It is. It's that We did definitely have some families out there. It's, uh, it's not a bike ride for, uh, for just the beginners, though. We definitely recommend that, you know, these are, you know, it's a family event, but with some experienced bike riders as well. And, and, and it, there's some stops along the way, too, right? I mean, the, the police are involved, Bill? That's, I'm sure that's, that's part correct. of your responsibility. Yeah. Yes, we, uh, we've coordinated with the police department as well. We, uh, as the ride goes south on Salem, we, it's kind of like a breaking point there. We stop there, wait for everyone to catch up so we can hopefully cross uh, Schaumburg Road at Salem in one group. Um, and then again, uh, we, as we meander through the, the trails and lanes south of Schaumburg Road, we uh, also have a stop at uh, uh, Branchwood and Roselle Road for the, the final crossing of the, of the busy streets. How, how, many, how many families are involved here? You know? Uh, last year we had uh, over 300 participants, so uh, you know that's probably about 100 families that participated. Um, we had a lot of uh, ro solo riders too that just enjoy coming out and being, uh, you know, enjoying a great day. We had great weather last year for this event. Hope to have uh, a great day as well this year. You get kids on trikes too, don't you? Don't you? It's not just for for experienced riders. You get you get little kids out there, you know. Pedaling, yeah, pedaling. yeah, they, they they pedal along for a little bit. They uh, you know as much as they can take. Um, we, uh, but you know we want to make sure that everybody knows that it is a seven mile ride out there. So that there's it, a police escort. I mean, that's good. Police are escorting out there. We also have uh, in the past we've had members of the the Schomburg Bike Club that have been out there as well, uh, kind of guiding people along. So, now what kind of entertainment do we have over here, Bill? We've got uh, the band. Uh, who's the band the, this the year? jukebox band. They'll be back again this Same year. Yeah. That's great. I mean, they, they, the families end up over here. They get a chance to, to hear some music. And they get, what do you get, hot dogs and, and hot dog, Hot dogs, chips, pop, and uh, great entertainment. And they usually, aren't they raffling off or t tickets or 
giving away something. There's some, usually some giveaways of some sort. Yeah, there'll be. Uh, there was a uh, raffle of some sort last year that the bike club put on. Uh, I think a, a membership in the bike club and some other some other goodies. Um, we'll have our uh, Farad. Uh, commemorative T-shirts that'll be for sale out uh, out at the plaza as well, uh, but it's great. I mean, people get off their bikes and they they uh, they ride their bikes right into a, a fun fun atmosphere. That's what we like to do. And what else do you do at the park district besides uh, coordinate the Farad Tour event, Chamber? <clears throat> Uh, well, I'm the box center manager over the uh, the facility on Braintree and Sharon. Um, so I manage uh, the the facility as well as the in the, in the pool in the summer. That's at uh, at Bach Pool. Um, I'm also in charge of general interest programs, which is kind of the catch-all group of programs that don't really fall under everybody else's category. And uh, I do the other spe I manage the other special events. How as long well. you been with the park district? Uh, I've been with the park district going on uh, this will it'll be nine years in May. Uh, I was at the sports center. I was the assistant manager at the sports center, handling the sports center in Olympic Park for uh, for about eight of those years. Is this your first year doing a Farad tour, Von Schaber? No, last year was my first year doing the Farad. Uh, got my first taste of the, the event last year, so so this year hopefully I'll be uh, bigger and better. I had a big crowd last year. I know that was it. And 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 once they get to the, once they get to here to the the plaza between the Prairie Center and and, and the Village Hall, uh, and and they get through eating their hot dog and eat, eating their their chips. How did they get back to where they started from? The park district uh, has uh, some trailers and stuff where, where folks can uh, load their bikes up on the trailers and then uh, take them. Uh, the trailers will uh, will we'll go back to Blackwell. Or they can ride their bike back. Or they can ride their bike back, yeah, yes, preferably. Except it's, uh, it's, it's uphill. <laughs> <laughs> get the reverse view. Yeah, get the reverse view. And, you know, for someone like myself, I, I understood very very, very rapidly, you know, you know, that it was uphill on the way back. So my bike's in my office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a great event, though. It's, it is, a, it's a great event. Cooperation between the village and the park district, and something like this, where the village takes over responsibility for, for handling a traffic aspect, right? Yeah, absolutely. Police involved, and, and uh, who picks out the band? Well, we've uh, we worked together to kind of pick out the band, but uh, they've been back uh, a couple years uh, now, and they've uh, done such a great job that we like to bring them back. They know the they know the layout. They know the uh, they bring uh, it's a three piece uh, little rock uh, rock trio, and so they've got uh, and you have volunteers out there working too. It it's selling the brat and not selling, but uh, yeah. taking care of the food and everything. Yeah, the, we'll have uh, we'll have some of the Schaumburg Park District volunteers will be out there helping out. We will have uh, some of our Schaumburg Park District staff, myself included, will be out at the uh, the event grilling up brats and burgers. And uh, uh, you'll and, be grilling. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, if, if I hope I hope I've got time to be uh, <laughs> grilling. Uh, How about you, Bill? I I love to grill. Sure, I'm all over it. I'm all over it. One for them, one for me. <laughs> hey, Bill. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks. For being here. Hey, George. Thanks, thanks for having thank us. You. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Shabber. Join us again next month for another all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town, especially at the Farage.